I mean, it comes with like hum like with humility, you know, being oh. humble. But I oh, also I'm also an athlete, so you know, that's in our blood with warriors. I love to compete, mm. but I genuinely love to compete because like I do I want people to be better. I know you can be better. Yeah. So we we've been making people raise the bar ever since, if I may say. As you should. We've been making yes, people King. every if you look around, we make people raise the bar and like I can't I was talking to some of my guys like literally about this and we're just talking about how the game is developed how some things can be some easier mm -hmm. to people but you you have to realize when you're like the pioneer and you're in charge of raising that bar like you did that out of pure creativity like you can't be mad when you said it that way and you don't want to compete no more like never too shy is back hi guys hey. <laughs> Hello. hello. I always get stuck in this part. Yeah, always. this part's always the awkward, Last, weird ass part where you're like walking into a room and saying hello. It's kind of what it feels like. Yeah. Last week, you're me like, and Tati tried doing it at the same time, and yeah. it just it oh, was bad. bad. It was the boxy twins just. Yeah, literally. I love it. Literally. I love it. Well, welcome. I'm Paulina. I'm Tati. I'm Nestor. And our guest today is here. Woo, woo. Who are yes. you, guest? Yeah, who the hell are you? <laughs> who hey, are you? Introduce yourself. <laughs> All right, well. To keep it simple, my name is Marcus. I go by creative artist, DJ director, yep. M-Doc. Uh, born and raised, you know, Southside. Shout out to my Afro-Latino people, Pilsen. Period. Yeah. Back right. of the arts, you know. Chicago kid, may I say. Yeah. I love it. Welcome to Never Too us. Shy. Welcome. And you've been knowing pretty much this room for a while. Family. It's family yeah. In the room. yeah. Literally. Like, yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, like we're family. all so busy i wish we could like be a little bit closer but i know yeah. that everyone's busy you're super busy and we're gonna get into that too. absolutely oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that is so true it's yeah. like everyone is so busy but it's still cool i think when we get to come the full circle moment mm -hmm. it's so funny because the moments the moments that we've been able to talk it's it might be a little bit weird because i would get so deep into like conversation and we're like at the club and i'm like he's probably like like in that, like I have to go DJ. You know what I mean? But yeah. I appreciate every single time that I like always stop, you though. take your. I mean, yeah. No, he does it. He yeah. goes a lot with me, no. and that's what I love. No facts. He always like takes time to like show love and like talk yes. to people, and I think that's much appreciated. I'm I like, think I'm, that's why people like him so much. Yeah, I'm like I'm sorry to be awkward, but <laughs> you're not awkward. I love it. No, yeah, you you are like that. Yeah, that's key. I mean, that's key. That's like one of the keys for me. Like just you know. Uh, like, you know, coming in, we want to talk about creation is key. Mm -hmm. You have to create those moments. If you're like, just, oh, I got to go, I got to go. You're not going to give that time to create those moments, you know, which uh, if I don't, if I'm just like always boom, boom, I never will have time to talk to y'all. Even like, for me, I could pick up information very fast. So yeah. even if I'm talking to you and have like a moment and that, I could tell hey, you going can on. tell a lot about people. I feel like it takes a lot for somebody to like, narrowed down to a person when like there's so much going on and then you can do like something so like intimate real mm -hmm. quick at that moment by having like a quick deep conversation i think it's respectable absolutely yeah i agree so we start off the show with um affirmations right, right. so kind of like the tone we're setting for the day the week whatever it might be something you're going through you're feeling um something you saw that resonated on social media mm -hmm. so um i can start first and then we'll make our way around if you gotta still think about yours it could be as long as as short as you want it to be uh -huh. um but i think for me this week mine is focused on um i'm a big bob marley guy over here love bob marley like such a fan and i know his movie's coming out or it came out already i believe um, so mine would be my favorite Bob Marley song, I think, which is when he says, like, um, don't worry, every little thing's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. I just remember hearing that. My stepdad, for some reason, would always play it. That's why I'm a big Bob Marley person. And I just remember hearing that when I was little. And, like, I think now at this big age of 30, I'm like, it's really resonated just, like, in so many ways, right? Mm -hmm. Whether sure, it's, like, right. career-wise or family, whatever it might be, friends, mm -hmm. issues you have Amen. going on. It's, like... It's so settling and comforting for me to hear those lyrics. And I love Bob. So maybe mm -hmm. that's why I make that connection. So for me, it's every little thing is going to be all right. Amen. I love that you're on first uh, name basis with him. With Bob? Oh, yeah, me and Bob. Yeah. You and Bob. We go way back. back. Uh, yeah, hey, I love when Bob, Bob says that's the, that's the man. That's the man. He is. I love Bob Marley. I so love that's mine. I'm close to Bob in many ways also. You, you probably are. I love I'm that. Close to yes. I love that. That's my boy. <laughs> Nothing too crazy though, yeah. chill. <laughs> do you want to go no. next up there, or do you want to? Yeah, I, yours? I can go. I okay, know perfect. Let's yeah, go. Ahead. You know, I feel like mine's is creation is key. Um, mm. Kind of everything I've been going forth. You know, one thing Bob Marley can say, "Don't worry," but like for the people who are constantly worried, if you create, that worry kind of goes away. Mm. 
I want to dive back into that later as well about yeah. you. That's, that's really deep. Your... I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I was like, wait, hold on. That Repeat. Up <laughs> a whole thing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I want to dive back into that. Maybe mm-hmm. like if that's kind of your way. No, nah, we could. I, you know, when go. you create, you know, because uh, creation comes from someplace, right? Yes. Like whether it's a place of hurt, place mm-hmm. of happiness, a place mm-hmm. of whatever. Mm-hmm. So I want to dive back into that. We can't, Absolutely. For, we can't forget that. But go yeah. ahead. Your turn. Mine is, y'all know mine are kind of long. <laughs> this one's kind of long. Mine is an army of lions led by a sheep is nothing compared to an army of sheep led by a lion. Mm. Hey. That's mine. Do We're you guys, yeah. today. I like yeah. that. I understand that. I like that. To me, that holds a lot of power. Yeah. I feel yeah. like there's a lot of people in the world that like feel like their strength comes from numbers and just from having a following, but a real leader, it doesn't matter who's with you. Like you lead and you just know Mm -hmm. you don't need validation from people. Mm -hmm. You don't need anything. So I feel like that hit. Max. And you're a Leo, right? Yeah. That wasn't why I said it. (laughs) I know it wasn't. It it kind of works. I thought about it. It kind of works. I thought of a lion. I love it. Yeah. I'm a lion, not a sheep. (laughs) Neister. I can't talk today. Oh my God. I have a, I have a, (laughs) Never mind. I'll, t- I'll talk to you about that <laughs> later. But um, mine is inspired by. Do you remember last time we went to go have lunch or not lunch, but dinner right after? Mm-hmm. I asked her, um, "Do you think it's true how they say that like uh, people have like um, compassion for like kids and women, but not for men?" Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's kind of inspired by that. And I don't know if you guys have seen like that those um, commercials where like. This guy talks about how guys only get flowers like in their death or whatever. Ooh. And so like something that I kind of like going off of that, just um, something my affirmation was like kind of like celebrate the men in your life more, you know. And I know a lot of people say like, oh, he's gay. So he does that already. But not in that sense, you know, like it's just celebrate the men because I feel like they deserve their flowers, you know. And with that, I actually brought you guys flowers. Wait, uh, what? I bought the guy's flowers because you I felt like... You did? That's yeah. so kind. Mm. I felt like... Wow. Oh. Wait, like, I'm going to cry. Stop. That made That's me true. emotional. That I, was so nice. I yeah, and I, I just feel like... Because oh. it was crazy. I was thinking about that and it was I was like just thinking about like... Man, that's tr- so true. Like people don't celebrate the man. And even now, like there's like this whole movement of like bashing men and like be like the masculating man and i am so about empowering women but also like just celebrate the man in your life i think for me that is important i don't do it enough i'm starting to do that more like with my 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 dad and my brothers Mm -hmm. um but yeah so absolutely and i think that's powerful you could do one without diminishing the other you could do both just but a lot of times it doesn't happen no right okay like we put each other against each other but yeah that yeah, is so sweet. sweet. You're very like, you yeah. think so quick and yeah. I love how you yeah. just think of others. I love that about you. Yeah, that's awesome. Aww. Look at your flowers. Yeah, that's fire. <laughs> He's just like, wow. It, def- it definitely it falls on it falls in the same line, you know? And when I say creation is key, it's not even just for self. It's like creating like for others. And then you never you can never like go wrong when you genuinely create for others. You even create the time, you create the moments, Absolutely. even the communication, the you know, Creating kind of like, because some people can't come to like that that thought or that that step forth, and that's the same thing that I mean in that sense, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I like that you said like creating for others because oftentimes like people will say like do it for yourself, do it for you, which yes, of course, like self love, do it for you. But there's many people. I think I'm one of them that like when I create for others, like that is self-love for me. Mm. Like what I do with my kids, like creating a safe pa- a safe place for them to cultivate their genius and find their artistry and feel loved. Like that gives me all the joy in the world. Like I'm doing it for them because that's like what I'm passionate about. And I'm creating those moments, those memories. I'm creating bonds. I'm creating artists. So I, I appreciate you saying that. Mm-hmm. yeah when i think about that um one time i was going through a lot and and i was telling i remember actually i was part of a church at that moment and i was telling the pastor like our youth pastor i was telling him like 
man, like, I feel like I'm still stuck and I'm going through a lot of stuff. And he's like, stop thinking about yourself and like think about others. And that that kind of like sparks that, you know, in my head. Yeah, Great, so I can yes. absolutely see that. Yes. Definitely. I want to dive in um, more about Marcus and, and, and talk to you because you have a lot of questions for you. The group uh-huh. chat has been getting... We've been grouping. Yeah, we've been grouping. Chat okay. and chat. <laughs> All right, run it, we're, we're you can put him right there because I don't yeah, know. I, know. I, I love how he's holding like, like a, a baby. baby. Like, like <laughs> listen, I you see that. this? Oh, I got so flowers. Cool. Um, before we dive in, producer Saw Marco. So your girl, can you give right. me some flowers? Yo, bring them to your girl. There, there you go. go. Oh, we got she doesn't need to know. She yeah. doesn't oh. need to know. Those are for you. Those are okay, we can like, give her one. Yes. Oh, yeah. Producer Marco, head. before we um, dive in, can you give us your affirmation as well? And you don't have a microphone. Okay. okay. Well, we can oh always gosh. toss I'd ours. Do you want me to toss them? Yeah, we could step over here. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're over here. The struggle. <laughs> We're sharing uh, our mics. I didn't even know I had an affirmation today. On the spot, on the spot. We love uh, on I guess, the spot affirmation. Uh, value your time with your loved ones. Mm. Ooh. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the small moments count the most, in my opinion. And having a little baby at home, you know, going through uh, a lot of ups and downs this weekend with her being sick and her Aww. waking up and everything else, I found joy and solace in the small moments. Mm. Even if it's three in the morning or five in the morning or eight in the morning, whatever it was, I was still joyful to have those uh, solid moments with my daughter. So Absolutely. enjoy the solid moments with your loved ones. Love that. I love that. Key. Yes, yeah. key. Mm-hmm. That is I don't key. know how you would do that because honestly, like, <laughs> if my kid was sick, I would feel like everything is falling apart. I would strong yeah. strength. Man, you're strong for you. that, honestly. Yeah. And that's why you got flowers. <laughs> right. You go, and you got your flowers. I love yeah. it. So, Marcus, you are here today with us and we are chatting about you. So we know you, but do we really know you? Man, I think, <laughs> what do they say? Do you ever really know a person and right. share around them for like yeah. all those hours? Damn. You know? That is real. That it's is just, real. It's just hours. Like, you know, our we've met through like friends and all of our mm-hmm. great moments where we're like really just being us, having mm-hmm. fun, being that. open. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, but then it's like, how do you guys work with the system? Like, how do you work with a boss? How do you work with like pressures from like somebody like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that's... That's all. That's all. Those are all different sides of us, and like Excellent. some of us have been endured and witnessed that, and seen people overcome, and some of us never know. And we disregard that, and we approach them in a way when we don't understand. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like it's it's just what where well, you got to be patient enough to communicate. I believe because yeah, it can you can assume very farly. Mm. Yeah. Earlier, before, you know, we actually fully started recording, because Marcus was already spilling tea. Like, he was already putting us on game, on life, and we're like, hold on, Marcus. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. But we talked, no, this, it was great, but we talked about just, like, what do you go by? DJ, creator, producer, and I think it's important to kind of talk about those roles you have and, like, how titles have power and how, like, many people may see you in one way, but what they don't see is this. Like, can you talk us through, like, what do people see versus what you are profoundly as a title i would say that i'm a creative director dj producer yeah Mm -hmm. um but first and foremost you know i'm a human that loves art in all its forms and that's where it all kind of began you know um you see how other people interact with art and color i'm like oh that's cool i want to why you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how old were you when you started djing Mm because you're, you're known to DJ, right? That's. I was a junior in high school, I believe. 17 for sure. And okay, yeah. How many years were you DJing before you went from DJ to like, now I'm directing like, I'm creating like things, you know? Like Man, I, I'm not, I came in as a trio. Like I was just, I'm already, already been like multifaceted in like art from like dancing, doing graffiti, you know, just mm-hmm. all of that. Being with my friends, we were, collectively organized by the way we did things as young kids even from like you know bombing certain spots you know and like doing stuff <laughs> like that like yeah it. you know like you have to you gotta prep you gotta prepare for those yeah, things yeah. otherwise you're gonna be getting your ass by your mom because she has to come pick you up yeah. downtown mm-hmm. all the time you know so mm-hmm. we don't want none of that um i would say 
When you said you came in as a trio, you said like, are you talking about this Velados? Are you talking no, about no, I'm talking about, about like, like as a, a creator. Like so artist. I started. I, so oh, like you personally. So when yeah. my friends, they had a warehouse which they were using as a studio in an event space. So when I first came in there, I was already like a graffiti artist. Blah blah. blah. You know they had the they had the turntable setups like you know in the corner and working on the mirror. I'm like. I cannot not go to the DJ thing and figure out how it works. I love dancing, you know? Like, they be making me move at the party. Mm -hmm. they, you know, so mm -hmm. I love music. N nobody's over there. I wasn't too intimidated by it. I picked it up every day. I'm talking about hanging out with my friends. Like, oh, they, they talking like I'm... When I... You know those people, like, when they get, like, very creative into something, that, and you'd be like, oh, they're kind of shy or they don't talk to them. Mm -hmm. Nah, I'm just, I'm having a party up here, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was just, like, me a whole whole summer deep practicing, going to the studio every day, learning how to produce music also. So yeah. producing music is a very key because it learns you, it teaches you how to structure something mm -hmm. within time. You know what I'm saying? Stuff together. So you have to, you have to, you you can make something and create something, but if you don't see it to, through to the end, then you like you know you're really just putting out. But mm -hmm. when you see where it's gonna start and where it's gonna end, you can you look at everything in a sense of way of like how it needs to be produced genuinely. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So trio, you mean like you were a DJ, you were producer, tagger, and then no dancer. DJ oh, no. producer in an event. So okay. creative director, I we the first time. I did anything. I was doing my own parties. Like we were doing mm -hmm. text messages and five dollars at the door I remember. from the this beginning. Is, I was this, there. Is, this isn't. This is, were you ever part of uh, the Southside Shakedown and all? Yeah, that stuff? I was yeah. a young boy. Okay, I was, so like, yeah. so when you talk about like you were putting events together, is that what you're talking we about? We are the reason why everybody knows all that music all throughout Facts. the city. Yeah. We did Absolutely. all the house parties. 100%. We brought all the DJs together. Girl. We we tried to do the biggest parties, have the best sound system. Uh, that's why we were able to sell out the Metro to do like that. It, you know, you had all these stuff. I like, remember those. Those were like really fire. Cool. 18 plus parties were Phone crazy. Parties. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was like European. The, I love European. Oh my God. European. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> There's a few of them. But yeah, as a trio, you know, a creative director, DJ producer, um, events, making music and DJing has always been like from, I haven't stopped. I was doing basketball going to school you know college graduated on multiple levels but still stayed doing it. that yeah. and oh my god dude, i don't know how you balance that in your head out just hearing you talk about all of this is like oh my I'm god i'll be honest god. with you the, the secret is that i think people just get exhausted with people too much and i don't get exhausted with people i love mm. it so i can do it all day me too that's what <laughs> i know that. that's true yeah that is true it's a lot of energy yeah some yeah, people are like oh, i'm over it i gotta go home huh? yeah and you like you just had one conversation how, like yeah how, how <laughs> do you <laughs> feel you like yeah. how do you stay filled because a lot of times what the reason why people feel like that there's a legitimate reason like your energy is being sucked out did you hear what she did you hear what she said what earlier she, when she no. came in no, I wasn't here at that moment, probably. Don't worry about a thing. People worry too much. <laughs> oh, with that, with, yeah. That's facts. Mm -hmm. Worrying too much about things that you don't yeah. need to, like, yeah. you know? I completely yeah, agree Yeah, and that. people, we talk about it all the time. People like me and her, we, or at least me. I Their social battery is, we're, yeah, we're, we're empaths, though. Yeah, That's we're, like, why. just worrying about people, just thinking about, like, how, did I oh, say yeah. that to... Did that offend this person and, that, and yeah. stuff like that? Every like, day, every so it's day. so much to the point where like I'm learning how to do that, but I'm guessing that it's a it's a balance. Don't get me wrong. Like we need people like you because like you guys are always gonna be willing to help somebody out because mm -hmm. you're worried about it. Mm -hmm. But now it's kind of like understanding that, but not letting it tack tack you so much where it also affects what you can do for people. Because then it's like. You know what they say? Don't do shit half-ass backwards type shit. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you you're literally yeah. going for it, and then you buying yourself. It's a balance. Yeah. It's always a balance. It's never. There's no perfection. Hundred percent. You know. Yeah. I think in this room, a lot of us we do um, consider you an influencer. Not what we like. You could be an influencer. You want to be like you know like those girls that are like, hey, <laughs> like I have you know whatever. I shampoo. Yeah. No, it's not like when we say influencer, we think of your influence on the city. And like with music yes. and events and 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 mm -hmm. now festivals, right? That's you're like a bit part yeah. of the big festivals in Chicago yes. and Pilsen. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so like for for you personally, right? Like how do you think? And this is your moment, so I want you to brag on it and, and okay. speak on it. Flex on, but like yes, flex on them. Like how do you think you've 
influenced the city and you kind of briefly kind of touch on that earlier said you know everyone knows this music because of us we were Mm -hmm. 18 year old kids or 17 year old you know what i mean throwing these parties which we were all part of we were all there and like that is how i knew that music that Mm -hmm. is how i got to meet a lot of people a lot of creatives a lot of really cool interesting just you know people in the city so my question for you is what do you think or how do you think you've left your influence and your mark on the city even though you're still doing it today you're still actively doing it. like i mean it comes with like hum like with humility you know being humble but i I also i'm also an athlete so you know that's in our blood with warriors i love to compete Mm. but genuinely love to compete because like i do i want people to be better i know you can be better so we we've been making people raise the bar ever since if i may say as you should we've been making people every if you look around we make people raise the bar and like i can't i was talking to some of my guys like literally about this and we're just talking about how the game is developed how some things can be some easier mm-hmm. to people but you you have to realize when you're like the pioneer and you're in charge of raising that bar like you did that out of pure creativity like you can't be mad when you said it that way and you don't want to compete no more like mm-hmm. <laughs> you know like you that's gotta, true you gotta mm-hmm. get you gotta Wait, get busy I don't, I don't understand that uh, so as far as competition like so say for example influencing a culture like i'm a, like an athlete you want the game to get better all, i don't believe in like like the I don't like that word influencer, but I believe in influence. But just you. but people follow. Like you look like I I get my influence from like you know great other DJs and great other like people who curated events from even like stories of people bringing people together. Mm-hmm. Like you understand the key thing in those positions is like that people are able to create and even create establish more relationships that are sometimes like beneficial. Like I know friends who've met the at our parties and how it just extended like you get me so imagine if we weren't having those gatherings where people were enjoying themselves that much that allowed them to open those barriers and connect you know what i'm saying yeah mm, that, and that's simple and that's the same way i feel about the festivals and everything that we continue to do now so when you mm-hmm. talk about the word competing just so i could get this is you're talking about you're setting that you were setting standards maybe and so, and then and then you've seen other people try to top those yeah, that's na- that but saying? that's but that's nature. That's yeah, sport. Yeah. That's like sport. We can't we cannot we can't get around that. You yeah. we we like how things look in a certain moment and then it's like ah and then somebody does something else. Ah. Mm-hmm. And then it mm-hmm. it gets it gets like to a way where it's like more mm, and it gets institutionalized just the same mm-hmm. way as like theory. You could go back to like Socrates and these guys. They wouldn't be as smart if they didn't challenge each other mm-hmm. like by theory, you know? I love that you the way you put it is in the way that like when you grow up in the neighborhood like you're trying to like compete with each other like i'm better than you not like you didn't say it like that and so i really like that he said it right mm-hmm. it's pretty cool that's why i said it starts with humility it starts yeah. with being yeah. humble you, it does you ain't the best i'm not the best but i mm-hmm. I, will, I will hope that in the light that so i will hope in the people's light that i would be the best and then that also gives you the responsibility of doing it not everybody can do it but like if you genuinely are not worrying and you understand like your craft you can continue like you know yeah, and, not, it, and it's continue. crazy that you've been able to influence because in a city like ours, because in different cities they back each other up, and I feel like in our a city like ours, like people are, compete in a bad way, but the way that you've been able to move has been in such a like a way where like people respect you, like they're not like I was just talking to somebody about you earlier, and they're like, you know what, he doesn't really have any beef with anybody. You know what I'm saying? I and never I feel, heard a bad thing never. about never. It's because, and I mean that. It's because as an influencer or a pioneer or a mm-hmm. leader, it's the way that people view you. They they view you with such stature and respect. And I feel like people with that have a lot of power. And so how you react and how you treat other people is a reflection of how other people will view that. And I feel like a real leader, a real lion, a real person who preaches to be humble and be better is somebody who doesn't talk down on others mm-hmm. in order for them to feel better then. And I think that's key and what a real leader is. Mm-hmm. I love that. Like if that's you're going to say be humble, then mean it and don't talk down Walk on other it. people yeah. when things aren't your way. Yeah. Cuz I I'm very I be mean, sometimes that. this one thing I've been like learning to do over the past years is kind of be a little bit more like straightforward but clear communication like i don't want it to hurt you too bad but i want you to know where it's like now i can Direct. flip that switch and you're good like because mm. people they do beat up themselves and they're like oh i can't do it. i can't and it's like you haven't been pushed enough because i mean and we i've learned that through growing up 
from the areas I have been in that's not been well and doing things like mm -hmm. from basketball and coaching, you're like, I don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? You still got to yeah. do it. Like there comes a sense where it's like, all right, let me do it. And then let me reevaluate. You know what? I wasn't, you, you start to put it together. Like if it's really purposeful and it's not. So mm. that comes from just being aware of it. Be like, most people are not aware. Just be aware oh, I love of that. that. I love that. Mm -hmm. that yeah. I like the reevaluate word. That's so important. I feel like a lot yes. of people don't do that. Like, I think it's okay to be accountable on things after reevaluation. Re I feel like in life, you always have to reevaluate. Did I handle this situation well? Was this a good business move I made? What can I do to be better? And then hold yourself accountable in order to make that change, in order to make those moves to be better. And that's part of, like, being a creator. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to always go back to the drawing board. Like, you can't think, okay, I did this. I'm good. I'm set. I'm the king. I'm the woman. I'm this. Yeah. I think it's important going back always to the drawing board and knowing like there's more to be done yes also the way that you move like you're able to connect with so diff so many different types of culture like you're yes. so like it's crazy to see you and then like i literally will see you at like big old events and you're such a good um you can you can see your crowd and then like you can read people exactly like he's so good at that and that's a skill <laughs> yeah it is so being observant of like movement and it's everything you you gotta look up you gotta it's different ways we can communicate mm -hmm. i have to i had to learn that like you know the hard way I, you're riding the train you're looking down walking on the street mm -hmm. you gotta look up sometimes you gotta look people it's gonna give you so much information that you miss you know mm -hmm. and then you go from there like yeah it's like a tool. They don't. They won't teach you that in school. They need to. Have you? Have you? <laughs> oh, you, no, no, have you ever felt in that? Like I've seen you do such a good job when it comes to that. But have you ever gotten like that? Not backlash, but like that resistance from a specific group of people. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How'd you deal with that? One of my Get other parties were like, it thing is, you just have to kind of know that. Oh, I wasn't kind of supposed to be here. One of my one of my worst like. Parties I could say was like, man, they don't, y'all don't do this. It was, we, me and my friend, we had an event in Chinatown and we we're playing like at a karaoke bar. Oh. And we were expecting like, you know, them to like get into like the party music that we like. No, that you had to, they just wanted to do karaoke. Like they're, <laughs> they're different. Like that yeah. culture is like, so yeah. knowing that, like I will never step in there without doing like K pop mm -hmm. and, sing songs like you know you doing have to, your homework <laughs> doing your homework doing your research yeah, so like being prepared that's always like a like for example i just came from a, a five a few day trip to um thursday we were in philadelphia friday we were in new york mm. uh, saturday we were in dc so those are all three different like environments Absolutely. Different parties, different people. Facts, yeah. S similar on the lines to music, and I want to go out and dance, you know. But if you take care of that and you cater to like what the city births, um, obviously the occasion, you could promote something. But at the end of the day, people are gonna be what they want to be. I know that. I mm -hmm. can tell you that from countless dance parties. Like, yeah. you find you find a blend. Like, it's you got. That's what mixing is. You gotta, you know, you have to. That's what a DJ, it's like a really like DJing life. You know, I see, I tell mm -hmm. people I got like, I got life on like a mixer board. You know, I can turn down, I can tone down this person, blah, 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 that ear and like focus on this because it's sounding good, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's a get detailed in that. It's like I, uh, Will I Am was doing, um, he was doing a podcast not too long ago and he was talking about distortion and harmony. You know, when music harmonizes, it feels lovely. You're like, oh, I'm in love. Like, that's what that feels like. But when you're like down and out and you're depressed, it's a distortion. So it's the same mm, thing. Crazy. It's the same thing that's with life. Cool. You know, yeah. you put that on, you put your life on like a mixer board. Mm -hmm. You only open up the channels that you can have. If you can't, if you can't do, if you can't do more than like two channels or four channels. That's me. I can't do more. <laughs> control. She could. She's, she's, she could. No. If, in, in, the, in like an analogy, control those tempos, you know, control those speeds and then mix gradually. And I think you could even add on to that, like, what what music do you want to even bring on the board? There's some music mm -hmm. that don't belong on that board Thanks. in your space. Yeah. And you got to know, like, yeah. get out. Yeah. The same for me. Not even tone down. Delete off the playlist, boo-boo. Does it harmonize, you know what I'm saying? How, with, that, with that being said, like, how do you, how do you, like, match basically the energy, right? And how do you know when you're doing that 
And when you just feel like so strong about something and not wanting to compromise, you know what I'm saying? Or feel like you're compromising your your artistry. Uh, yeah. yeah, you gotta, you gotta, because you gotta, it could happen. Uh, you know you have what to, I mean? Yeah, like, you it can, but you have to lead though. You have to lead. Like when you step up there, it's a, it definitely is a job. You know, you have to, you gotta, you gotta show them why they're, why you, why you're there in the first place. Like I'm here to make you dance. Um, I. I'm not supposed to give you what you thought you're supposed to come here for. I'm supposed to make <laughs> you be that. like, oh, okay. Like, <clears throat> feel uncomfortable. Be like, yeah, did you want to move? Then move. Like, yeah. you know, talk to that person. Is that, did that, tell that person, man, did you hear that? Was that good? We don't, I don't see that enough. Like, I don't see people like, yo, you, I, when I go to like other cities, I see that kind of conversation amongst the crowd. That's the best thing I like to look for. That's really why I have my head up. I want to see people like, you hear this guy? What is he doing? Yeah. I want to see the ugly faces, like the uh, then and I want then two the, people to catch each other doing the ugly face and that they don't even know each other. And then like <laughs> boom. And then switch up. And then at the moment it's like people just talking about, you know, like how good that was. But between the things that we don't see, how we're talking, like how you don't see everything, all these other little conversations and moments, because these people are in good moods yeah. that they're going through because of that you just came from this fantastic experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I feel like you can apply that to not if not if you're not a DJ, but if anywhere, you know what I mean. And I think for all of us, we're learning how to balance that better, you know. And I feel like I have a hard time because I feel like I'm very, I can either be very direct or very passive, you know. And so mm -hmm. people expect me more to be passive. And so when I'm being direct, then I'm just learning how to like be respectful, but at the same time, be able to bring your whatever you bring to to things and so i see you balance that very well and i commend you for that well thank you um i want to talk a little bit about well not talk i want to ask you about i feel like you're a huge mentor like yes you're a curator and you're a dj and a producer and a creative director but i feel like mentor is definitely a title that you're deserving of mm -hmm. there's so many people like julian for example uh, he does a lot of the mixes for Latino Suntos and this, like he has an ear for things and like he I love working with him because like I'll be like okay I want to do this in the movement so give me a sound and like we build stuff from scratch and we just had a conversation when we were working together like two weeks ago and I'm like Julian when did you learn how to DJ and he was like Marcus mm. he's wow. like I literally I literally at the parties cool. I would just I like stand that. by the booth and watch yep. and, and then marcus was then marcus like literally took time to show me and i know he's not the only person that you like mentor and you help grow the community with and so like what does mentorship look like for you right now like what are you doing now to help other djs producers event creators i i i, I go forward of trying to teach them balance awareness of things they don't that they don't know and how to like put it into like refinement, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I've been through it, like, I'm not, I don't want you to waste time. I'm, you know, I, with something that I, like with creativity, I can kind of be not impatient, but like, if I see that you have the ability, I'm like, what are you doing? Go, 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 mm -hmm. you know, in a sense, like yeah. when they say you got it and like, you got to Lock in, yeah, hone you in. you got it. And if, and if yeah. you, and if you're unsure and you're like, well, tell me why. And then I'm like, then I'll, I'll convince you why. I'll sh look at this like this. Right, right. let's try this exercise let's um you know like just giving giving people information because like you say it's like giving people flowers it's the same thing mm -hmm. it's mentorship it's like i want you to be better i want you to be good you know because i want to see you smile or some shit like that you know like i mm -hmm. want to that's exciting i'm like oh man i gotta pick myself up you know yeah that and that's some like next level stuff like mentorship is next level things like i i feel like everybody here can create but when you're able to teach and when you're able to mentor, like mm -hmm. you're you're taking your craft to another level, and mm -hmm. I think like I want to be able to do that. So that was a great question. It, do, it does a lot. So say for example, how you were talking about we were talking about like raising the bar. Like mm -hmm. men, when you mentor, you know you're gonna raise the bar. So yeah. now, so now if like I'm mentoring and I've been mentoring long, I have all these scholars. Like yep. you know, like Julian, phenomenal, killed it in the dance world. I'll be like, yo, mm -hmm. I'll be like, y'all got to come out to our events. I want to get you guys out there mm -hmm. to our events because I like our dance parties are lacking the performance, the like the grand like we brought something to the table. Like, 
mo- like good DJs like me, like I like a lot of good DJs when they make the preparations to bring and entertain and bring you something new through the skills that they uh, accumulated through like practice mm-hmm. and hours that mm-hmm. nobody else seen. Mm-hmm. Like that's when you hear like the wow effects. Mm-hmm. When you be like, what is this guy doing? He's just playing. It's like, and you talk about another DJ. Yes, because they just probably downloaded something, bought some like expensive giver, and like. They they lied to somebody. <laughs> my, friend, yeah. my friend be saying like, yeah, but you have to, like mentoring is, and mentoring in a genuine way, like mentoring not where you're like telling somebody what to do. Yes. You have to, you have to listen and just hmm. open up the options. And yeah. it's, you know, it's like, like I want to be stronger in what way, physical or like mentally, like. Getting strong in those ways, you still have to do reps, but they're different. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're one is in the form of talking with you know, mouth or just communicating, holding your head up and communicating with yourself. The other one's kind of like physical, where it's like, you we sometimes we don't like them. I don't want to talk. I don't want to run or something. Mm-hmm. But it's like those things are gonna challenge you, and if you can do that challenge by yourself, like you can help somebody else get through that challenge in a sense. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For yeah. sure. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was going to just say, um, you also did like off air kind of, we, we were diving into that and I want to get your perspective on it because you did say something that was really interesting, but like, you know, you would be considered, I guess, if we're talking like on paper, a multi hyphen, is that what they're called? <laughs> M- multi something. You know what I'm trying to say? Where like you do multiple things, right? And truthfully, I think a lot of us here at this podcast even do every single person, like we do a hundred different things. And yes. I think that's kind of like where we are at today a lot of creative people are just tapping into so many different um things you know so you did mention though you're like oh it gets complicated though at some point so Mm -hmm. what what do you mean by that so is it is it better to to not list all that you do to the world society or like should we just be known as one thing you know what i mean it it can it can diminish its value because like the where we where we are is kind of like people only want you to do one thing and that one thing good only. Like, mm. um, for example, from my perspective, like I don't think everybody in like the NBA or some of these places are really good. I just think they were fortunate enough to be around people in a certain good path and those opportunities came that's to good. them. That's too, yeah. Like, so, uh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Thing. Yeah, that's I like, get that. Yeah, straight like that. I like can't. that. <laughs> straight like that. You gotta like some people got it, and some people, you know, they don't in that they nature. Get it. But it's just like being knowledgeable for it. Like so. Yeah. For example, man, like that was crazy. I, that's like deep. I'm from like I'm from Chicago, so when we see people like in the league, you know that like they could have went pro if they had support not all of us have that support we don't have that family you know we don't have cr- the time for that you know? you know what's crazy that reminds me of like whenever i go because my brother does the reselling and whenever we go to the shows there's some stores where like they come in with like such a dope setup and everything and my brother always reminds me like but we were we came up differently he's like they've had such a huge support like financially from their family mm-hmm. and we haven't like a head start you know almost. and and when you set that right out i'm like dang that's crazy right. and it's it's a reminder to yourself like like you're at places where you are, are because you've got something not because like you paid your way there you know what i'm saying so. i've been trying to compound my value like that's what it's all like coming to it's like a compound value like so doing all these things, doing all the multi-facet things and keeping them like focused will eventually create like a compound interest if you want to get into that mm-hmm. per se. If you do too many things that spread people out too far where they're like <clears throat> and they have no connection, yes. you start diminishing your value so that people are going to be like, so what do you really do? You know? I mm-hmm. see what you're so, saying. Like I told you before, like I consider myself in like the corporate world. If I want to work with anybody business to business, I am a creative director. A creative director operates on many, you know, multiple, you know, assets of controlling logistics, mm-hmm. even creating, you know, we know how to do things. That's why yeah. it's, it's creative director. It's a like, huge thing. Yeah. And then if I like if I if I tell the wrong person or something, I'm just a DJ. Mm-hmm. They consider that as uh, like a hobby or something for like entertainment. They've already boxed you in. But, but, but whole time, it's like it's actual profession of like my artistry. I treat this like 
I get up and put up, do put up hours of research and repetition to not only like perform well, but to also make these agreements and these deals with other business people to say to secure income, which like we all do, yeah. you know, and producer, that's a, that's somebody who can put things together, you know, in the timely fashion. Um, even if it's music, executive mm -hmm. producer for movies, like, so if you, you have to explain those in a very professional way, because if you don't do it right or within the right seconds, they, people, they'll jump to assume assumptions and dis diminish the value of that, which is like, people are not getting their flowers if you look at it a certain way. I get, it's so hard to swallow that for me because... I get exactly what you're saying. I get where you're coming from, but I, it's hard for me to do that personally. It's so hard for me to, because mm -hmm. when it comes to me being on brand, um, I don't, I, I'm like kicking that Bucky, like w where I don't want to be like refined in that. One dimension. No, yeah. I don't, I don't want to be, like I don't want to have to do that, but it's so cool that you've been able to do that, and it's it's gotten you to places that your talent obviously has gotten you there. But because you've been able to refine yourself in a sense, like you're you're where you're at. You know what I'm saying? And I think to me, it's hard for me to swallow that because I don't want to like learn a lot of things. But then at the same time, I'm like. I have to, you know what I'm saying? Hard work beats talent. Um, in the sense where, like, I don't, like, I told my I told my brother the other day, like, I told him, like, dude, just be yourself, like. Yeah. Because he tries to sound to me like someone that he's not. And to me, and we're different, like, types of uh, business, but mm -hmm. but when I see you, I see, like, greatness, and I see, and it, it doesn't change because you have been able to evolve, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, like, when you grow up a certain way, you, you look down on that, you know, and you shouldn't because this is what's going to get you to being at your best, you know what I'm saying? If that makes any sense. Yeah, you, ha you have to, it's kind of like you have to experience some things, you know, some people are scared to experience in a sense of, like, I think that's going to go wrong. I've been learning to kind of like put that aside a little bit more too, especially as these years have been going up. That's mm -hmm. why that's kind of, if you see anybody or if you look into like how they do, like just kind of, you know, advance in a certain way or sometimes rapidly, they kind of, they kind of just say, Phew, like throw away like those bad worries and they just go. When well, you know how some people say go with God or something like that, mm -hmm. you just go. Like, why are you like worrying about mm -hmm. like what other people think yeah. or or what you can't accomplish that you haven't tried yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just question it deep. Like we're we're not perfect. Everything's gonna hit us. Sometimes we we're dehydrated. Sometimes <laughs> we don't have energy. You know, it's gonna you're gonna feel a certain way. But like, yeah. if you're consciously aware the whole time, you you you'll find your because you might not even find it in yourself. You might find it through conversation. Mm. You might find it through just a moment looking at something. But just be aware of it, man, and don't. Don't worry too much, you know? I, yeah. That's what I can say in that sense, you know? Um, it's all what you know, because like, I, I, I like to go through life in a flow, you know, um, but also handle my objectives. Because mm -hmm. if you're flowing where you're going, sometimes... The, you need some direction. The, yeah, you the need... system's not going to like... It's not right. going to go for you. You might flow into like where it's, <laughs> not, where it's, less, where it's not that much... Yeah. Re Don't flow where, where the resources get scarce, too. That's like what some people... and. That that happens naturally when you when you don't objectively. Oh man, we got to go this way. You mm -hmm. know, um, be knowledgeable of that for real. Yeah, love that. So, can you tell us a little bit about like you already said you were on like a tour. Mm -hmm. You were in New York, and then you were here and that. How did that even come about? It was you and like four other DJs. So, shout out to the Broski yeah. Geo Sands. Shout him out. Resides out of Humble Park, Logan mm -hmm. Square, Boricua. You know, mm -hmm. similar like communities. Sepa. You know, we birthed in like, you know, hip hop, Chicago itself, the bad and the good, the entertainment, the culture. Um, just real, humbly recognizing game across the city, cultivating relationships. Like I, I did a post earlier today to kind of like show like where it like started and now what we have accomplished. It started from me just having a startup, you know, bar, but understanding that he like, 
people like him are in the game and they're doing their work in their city and in their areas, they could be over here, but it, you know, it doesn't work like that. But I want to know how that would look over here. I, I'm interested. I want to, you know, I want to meet this person because mm -hmm. I have the ability to arrange that. Um, fast forward to the tour. He gets the opportunity to do a three city tour. Um, he gets to pick some of the people he wants to rock that he feels deemed to play with. You know what I'm saying? You have, it's his, it's his taste. It's, um, it's his brand, <clears throat> um, something that he holds like dear. So open it up and inviting, coming out with people that he trusts to not only, you know, drive with him in the form of safety, but also to secure like, you know, other things and to provide a musical experience for other cities and create other relationships. Like that's culture of this. This mm -hmm. is how we like build, you know? Yeah. I love that. That's, That's culture. And like, and it so is. fast forward and all the little in-betweens before you, people skip over there, like from not only like I showed like him playing with me at Twisted, I showed him how we, when he first started event, he was like, yo, I want to start this event over here. And I'm like, yo, do that. It's going to be popping. Not, you know, I think some people kind of like when this idea is like, oh, let me jump in. No, listen a little bit more. Listen it out. Hear them. It's kind of like a conversation like with like your girlfriend or something or your boyfriend they just need you just need to listen sometimes mm. and let them do it mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. then support it when you see the time to you need to support fast forward multiple parties bringing our people together we do put a, a yacht party that we did one time from like 1 a.m to 5 a.m watch the sunrise come up banger like yeah. you know what i'm saying in That's chicago awesome. banger and then yeah. watching like his success you know he had to he had to depart, you know, from Chicago because you know about Chicago gets like scarce. But it's not that we don't love it, but it's business. Like at one point from like the craft, you start to understand like the business of the reach because you want to potentially affect people for the better. So we get into that. And man, this relationship's fire. His family, yo, he's like, they're all my family. I brought my little bro out there for mm -hmm. Jay Santos. He mm -hmm. debuted in New York, killed yeah. it. You know, I don't know if people are looking at Chicago music and DJs who play like world class dance parties, house music like like that. We seriously like love this and and they don't even know you guys. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. They don't even know how great you guys are and your assets and you were over here in Chicago. Don't, you know, we only really got people over there, but it's just like in these little spaces and things that we create, I would want them to know about you guys if I have the opportunity, you know? Have you ever been in a place where like the opportunity has come up? of you moving. I was going to ask yeah, that. Like, place, do you see yourself staying or, in Chicago? And, oh, okay. And <clears throat> are you one of those people like myself that I'm like, I'll, I don't mind traveling for a client. You know what I mean? But I, you know, like I have that, come see, come see, when you have that, um, that stubbornness, like I want Chicago to pop off. You know what I'm saying? Yes, because yes, you believe yes. so much in your city. And so like, Keeping all that in mind, what do you think? Uh, like, I'm in the mood to go anywhere now, but I'm also like, I'm also knowledgeable enough to know that I just have to make preparations to, all right, because you know, it's not going to, Chicago won't be here. It's not really going to go far, you know, but as far as like my relations and like who I work with, now, I have to make sure those are like soundly in place so I can mm -hmm. now relocate. Um, as far as living, what, it, what does it kind of say? Um, you have to be in your environment, you know, like mm. I can handle Chicago environment for the time being. Is it the best place for like me playing? Probably not. Some, I can go somewhere else and people be like, we need you to play here, here. We're going to give you this, this and that, you know. However, this is my home and I'm, I'm also like, I'm. A, we will build here. We will, we will have it secured where we can now go on a sabbatical or, or may you say and visit and show them how we can come back to this. Kind of um, how like Kanye did. <laughs> exactly. That's what, that's what it kind of takes for like Chicago to, to kind of accepting. Cause we're just so good, man. It's like, we have mm -hmm. so many different things and it's like, well, why you got to go over there? And it's like, and we stop at a point of where it's like, I'm good, but are we good? That's crazy. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I'm good, but are we good? <laughs> it takes a, it takes a lot of being able to grow within, like to be able to see that, take those steps. Yeah. Or, like, that is facts. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna say, um, before we wrap up, if anybody has any final questions, but um, mine for you would just be, 
like going off everything that you said today right like nestor asking like you know if something about like chicago like would you would you relocate would you stay whatever what would be something or what what is what are you working on at the moment right yeah. that like, like what's like what's happening next? now in your life and what is next i know summer's coming it's huge mm-hmm. in summer. chicago it's like we mm-hmm. own summer <laughs> yeah summer you know shine. so what is like happening for you and it can be personal stuff too as well so so a lot just happened. So if, if I can structure it in a in a very simple way, think about it as like my gallery as an artist. I have resident events that I do on a weekly basis where it's like yes. a gallery of music. I have I do a party called Tribe, which is mm-hmm. a world collective of house music. Honestly, soulfully coming straight from Chicago, but with all the worldly influences, because we are people from many different nations. Um that event incorporates the production of a full-blown show and a dance party where musicians, performers are all invited and guided amongst the knowledgeable maestros of, of DJs who know how to respectfully in, intertwine all of that or yes. respectfully perform their slot, you know, in a sense. You know, it's a party where you take care of all those little different aspects. And then Mm -hmm. as a creative director, going into all the festivals and managing different bar crawls in my community, hopefully I want to like have those where those business ultimately help institutionalize the craft and provide the outlets of which we once had that we don't have anymore in Chicago. Like there's no, there's no classes or kids can just go and literally focus on like playing music and learning about music, just oh, like, chilling, like after school like stuff, stuff, all like of that. that is not enough. We had, like when I came up, we had a bunch of that. That's why I was able to like break dance, do video, videography. Mm-hmm. I do all my own promo, do all my own, all my own advertising work, branding. People don't know that. They'd be like, but I do all that too, graphic mm-hmm. design mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. But it's like, now I can't put that on a job title because now you're going to want me doing that. You're taking away from my artists. Like that's, yeah. that's just what I have as, you know? Yeah. Um, that work putting it's like putting all that work together so like yeah it sounds like a lot but at the end of the day like i'm an artist and like chicago's like my gallery if i may say i love that. i'm like, an artist and chicago's my gallery that's, you know? the, that's and, the title of this episode and, yes it is and then there's touring galleries some people mm-hmm. bring their galleries around the world and that's simply what i want to do with music mm-hmm. and our community and people yeah oh and, we love it uh, well we'll be at all the well we will. You'll, you'll be there with a plus. A yeah. baby Bjorn on yeah. my chest. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there. We'll all be there. there. Oh, <laughs> we'll all be there. We're gonna, we'll we're be, gonna there. be at the events for I'll sure. I'll support as, as much as I can. No, yeah, I'm, I'm outside. I saw. I'm outside this what summer. What did I? Too. Oh, girl, well, I am outside ish. this summer. I didn't drink last summer. It's starting in the end of July. Yeah. So that was my last drink. Was when I was in in um, where the hell did I go? To uh, Mexico. Yeah, this summer. This summer just dropped, man. Like my homies, they just dropped and meet you. I was gonna say Mitra Fest is happening um, in July thirteenth. Oh, July thirteenth. I put all this in my calendar. I'm so fucking lame. Oh. But I'm like advertising Mitra Fest. <laughs> we, we do sponsor it. No, we it's, 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 it's our gallery. I, I, they should trust me. I'm working on a lot of that, man. Mm-hmm. It's a lot yes. of people should be like helping back in the communities, but it's just, mm-hmm. you, it's a it's a deeper than we know it because it's just so expensive to do a lot of, of things course. and all these yes. different. Yeah, you know, but the money is out there. Know that the money, yeah, and all that's out there. We just gotta. Put it together. Know that. If I could say one thing to people, we're all affected by that. But once we master that and, we're, and we know that and we could work in our system, then we just think about our community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Love that. That's why I love these festivals. Like, and I'm, I'm not just saying it because you're literally here, but like your festivals, the ones that you're a part of, like I think are the only ones that I really pop out to on, on the summertime, like mm-hmm. to be completely honest. Like I know there's a ton and, and I, I know, and there's no shade to any other ones. I just physically don't go to them for some reason. But like the ones in Pilsen or Southside, mm-hmm. like, I don't know why. Maybe because to me it's like nostalgic. It's home. I don't. I yes, don't know. Those, those are the two perfect words, like yeah. nostalgic and home. Because if we rewind back to the beginning of this episode, like yeah. he talked about, like these parties in the metro, or even just basement house parties, Literal five dollars. Like party. we were there, so it's like you're giving us that same was there, guys. feeling. I was there. Same. You're giving us that same feeling, but like they're also like very family friendly a lot of these too and like you see kids dancing and you see kids like enjoying the art Mm -hmm. and i think that's what's key is that like it doesn't end it's gonna keep on going and building generations and building it's always gonna be inspirational Mm -hmm. like you know it's inspirational per se so for sure i had a comment but like it's probably like a gonna lead to a whole nother conversation but 
It, are there people that you don't? Because she said she said something like, um, all the ones that you do do, right? As far as the projects the that you're part of, why is there is there certain things that you don't do, and why? Because they don't take care of people. It's all mm -hmm. one sided. It's one dimensional. I, mm. I can't do that. It's like yeah. it's like you're literally walking into a lie. It's hard, man. And it's like you don't. Nah, I have to. I can't be in that, you know. Because then you have to like. Well, they're okay, and no, nah, that dude's a fucking asshole. Don't work with him. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, or like all that shit. You yeah. gotta be like mm, that's you, big. Because my thing is that. Somebody says you should never work with somebody who doesn't care about you. Like they're not like you're working for them and they don't even care how you're eating. They don't even care about like how you're living. What if you're about yeah. to have a baby? If you if your boss doesn't care about like where your baby's gonna go to school and that, like <laughs> acts about like, oh, you're just like a number to them, yo. Yeah. Man, peace, yo. No way. I'm I agree. <laughs> I think that's a representation like who you have in your space and who you choose to partner with, looking at their morals, their values, the way that's, they come off is so important because if they don't align with yours, that's not going to work. That's what. I, that's no that's way. where my question was going. Like, is there people, on top of them not taking care of their people, is there people that have certain beliefs that because they have those beliefs then you don't fuck with them and it, I'm not talking about it's not like messing with them it's just like keep it 100 what, what do you want like what do you want our presence for what do you want like my time for I'm very like that with my friends even if I ask you to come for something or you I'm not gonna like waste your time I'm gonna make sure if you're doing like braids for me I'm gonna make sure you have a deposit or everything you need to be secure about the time that you're about to spend doing that for me yeah and I get that. you know what I'm saying so your employees or somebody who you you want to work with if you're not worried about my time and you're only worried about like my grind piece, like I can't, mm -hmm. you're just trying to piggyback about that stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like take care of people's time and you'll be good. Take Amen. care of people's time. I love it. Um, well, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for, you know, spending the the episode here and, and just for dropping all your knowledge and we got to like kind of dive more into you and get to know mm -hmm. you, which was really cool. Thank um, you, thank you. Keep doing your thing and, yes. you know, stay, stay humble, stay busy, stay happy. Yeah, we All the above. <laughs> stay, stay connected. Stay connected. Stay connected. Yeah. Where can we follow you to keep up with you for those who are tweeting in as well? Where can they do that? Um, you can follow me on IG, uh, mdoc312. Um, mdoc312 everywhere. I mean, for SoundCloud, music, everything, Spotify. Yes. You'll find me, mdoc312 from Chicago. Yes. Beautiful. Um, Thank yeah. you. Yes. I wish I think this could have been like a part one and part two, but yeah. We'll have yeah, to have him back could, then. Yeah, I think we should just have him back. The floor is yours. The mic's But I'm sure we're going to continue to work with each other and mm -hmm. be doing more Absolutely. cool things. We will. We but will. Agree. These conversations need to be had. Like, Absolutely. We don't communicate. Like right now, I'm going back to the crib to communicate some stuff. And it's just because, like I said, <laughs> people communicate in different ways from different perspectives, Facts. different times and place. So yes. you're going to get that. That is true. And That's make sure true. to follow the podcast at Never Too Shy as well. Um, follow me at Paulina Rowe. At Talk With Tati. At The Bra Bro. That's right. And again, Never Too Shy pod on Instagram. I always fuck this part up. So I want to make sure I got it. <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Peace. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.